Hello and good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing today? Doing great. Good, thanks. How was the week for you all? You know, pretty, a bit stressful week probably, uncertain week. How was the week for you all? Oh, okay. How's the meditation been going? It's going well. I'm doing a lot of it. I'm able to do a lot of it on my in the morning now. Oh, wonderful. And um, anything, any changes you're noticing in yourself, in your lifestyle, and your life in general since you started meditating, Tim? Uh, eating less. Um, lost about 34 pounds. Oh, wow. That's, and that's a huge number. My knee that's been bothering me doesn't bother me as much. Oh, very nice. And I wanted to thank you after our discussion last Saturday 
so you cleared so many things that were in my head and i have been feeling really light after that that's very thank good. you so much absolutely that's uh that's part of my job <laughs> <laughs> your job only is noble to begin with <laughs> well, i consider it as a blessing to be able to help yes you I, know i was helped and now it's my turn to help yeah i agree with you there it's, it's amazing blessing. right the, yeah it's it's a blessing right the way this whole system works is it's it's amazing how uh, she put it all together that it's a simple human to human one per human being helping another human being and that's about it there's nothing more or nothing less to it yeah. and uh, that's the way it works so, all right wonderful um any questions anyone has any questions before we get started for the day yeah i wanted to ask a question like um and my meditation experience is getting better in the sense that uh, those occasions where i used to feel nothing feel nothing in the sense that wherein i just couldn't uh, concentrate my attention and a lot of thoughts kept coming that has definitely reduced mm -hmm. but sometimes it it's sometimes it's still happening that i do really want to meditate but mm -hmm. i have just no control over my thoughts yeah. so i wanted to ask you that you know is it something like which will gradually go away or is it like something can be done about it so that mm -hmm. i could meditate better yeah so it's both the answer is both right okay. uh it eventually it goes away but it goes away uh with our effort and there's a reason for it the reason is you know goes down to our desire for our own spiritual growth uh the more intense our desire the better the quality of effort so it's not just how long i meditated right it's not about yeah. did i meditate for an hour you don't need to meditate for an hour right you right. could have a very good meditation within 15 minutes mm -hmm. or 10 minutes right it's the quality of meditation that matters and the quality of our meditation is very very much a factor of our intensity to grow okay in our in our spiritual being right yeah because ultimately you know what gives us the deep meditative experience is our kundalini right there's nothing more to it than the kundalini being active and rising with more and more strength and reaching our seventh chakra the sahasrara right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the more of the kundalini that gets to the sahasrara the deeper the meditative experience okay and the the kundalini is a, a whole bunch of strands of energy Mm -hmm. right think about it as a rope that is made of strands of fiber okay right hundreds of thousands of these strands in the beginning very few of those strands rise cross the sixth chakra get to the seventh chakra that is what gives us our self realization the process gets started right attaining self realization is the start of the process now building up on it it's like a seed that has sprouted Okay. right once it has sprouted it is about then nurturing it giving it the right environment and the right nourishment for that seed to becoming into a sapling and from the sapling becoming into a plant and a plant becoming into a tree right mm -hmm. so that process has to play out now is it a 20 30 40 year process no it's not like a tree you know uh, you plant a, uh, a oak seed and then it takes 15 years for it to grow to a full blown tree um this the your intensity of desire is what causes this tree to grow faster the okay. seedling to grow faster the sapling to grow faster your your intensity of desire then drives the quality of your meditative experience 
because your kundalini is always watching for your desire right okay. if my desire is not intense the kundalini will of course be active but it will not be as intensely active okay. because it respects our desire and the reason for that is because we have been given the freedom to choose right if i okay. choose not to meditate if i meditate one day and then don't meditate for three days and then meditate for one day all well, my growth will be in spurts right little spurts you know right. it'll grow and then it'll pause then it'll glow and it'll pause and during that pause period when i'm not meditating what is happening is you know i'm taking a few steps back mm -hmm. during the time i'm not e either i'm moving forward or i'm moving back there's no nothing like i'm staying static okay right i'm either progressing forward or i'm moving backward it's like time <laughs> time only moves forward right doesn't move backward but your attention can take you back right you cannot say oh i want to be in this moment mm -hmm. for the next one hour no it will flow you can right. think about the moment that has passed relive that past moment but it doesn't stop moving right so your your progression is happening either in the forward direction or in the reverse direction now mm -hmm. am i am i moving forward so it is not about you know i'm in a race to get to some place it is the steady progress right it's the it's the story about the hare and the uh, and the turtle right uh, mm -hmm. the the turtle although is a slow walker but it's able to get to the end of the race first because you know keep moving it didn't slow down he didn't stop right mm -hmm. same thing with us the more effort we put into our daily meditation mm -hmm. right it's not about doing it one hour every two days but it's just doing those 15 minutes every day right seven days a week right which keeps the movement moving forward so that is the the effort part of it now mm -hmm. the second part of meditation is the how how do we meditate and i think that's a very another very important aspect of understanding um is you have to create that routine for yourself that yeah i meditate every day and say set up a time for yourself right in the morning mm -hmm. i meditate 10 minutes i wake up at 6 am or 7 am or whatever your time, wake up time is and the first thing i do is i meditate and then uh, before going to bed i meditate for 5 7 minutes right now setting up that routine and holding yourself to that yeah um don't uh, expect that someone will be calling you and chasing you down right that's that's, that's not the way we do it right it's left to the individual freedom right do you right. want to put yourself into that routine right mm -hmm. uh, and we put ourselves into the routine uh, we see the results then the second is you know creating a positive environment where you live right okay. in your house in your apartment wherever you live creating that positive environment uh, what does that mean it means you set up a place which is nice clean uh, ready for your meditative experience right mm -hmm. set up a little corner it doesn't have to be too elaborate it could be a simple desk or a simple you know night stand uh, by the uh, table lamp right you could just put mm -hmm. a little picture of shivadhar ji you could you know you could put some a chair where you sit and meditate or if you sit on the floor put a mat where you sit and meditate. so there is a environment where you have a inviting environment that you have created for yourself right uh, mm -hmm. light a candle when you meditate uh, the light element and the heat element the, the especially the light element helps clear the left channel helps okay. clear the left channel now uh, what happens is and today we are going to talk about that Uh, our left channel is more prone to uh, negative negative energies right okay. uh, negative energies exist everywhere just as positive energies exist so both exist right now which one are we taking in more uh, by and large most of us generally draw more on the left side right uh, Uh, so the whenever there are negative energies on the left side so what what are indications of that indication and i think we'll probably get started in the class and we'll talk about it 
So when the left side, it is going out of balance, becoming aware of it mm -hmm. and taking proactive steps to work on it, right? It's like when you see um, an imbalance, do something about it, right? Uh, <coughs> take care of it, uh, fix it. Uh, it. It shouldn't take too much time, but the daily fixing, the daily deviation that you, uh, that we all get into, right? We correct that deviation and keep on that center path. The more we can stay on the center path, the, mm -hmm. the better the Kundalini is able to rise when you meditate. Because what you want is when you are meditating, say you meditate for 10 minutes, out of those 10 minutes, you want to have good quality meditative experience for at least half the time, mm -hmm. right? Out of mm -hmm. those 10 minutes, the first five minutes will probably go into settling your attention in and bring it to, bringing it into balance. But the second half of it should be in that state of quietness, in that state of thoughtlessness, in that state, meditative state, where your kundalini is settled nicely in your sahasrara, and you're actually just, it's like, you know, uh, you're, you're just in that state of quietness. Nothing mm -hmm. disturbs you. Right. The surface is very settled. The thoughts are not bothering you. Uh, your emotions are not bothering you. Uh, things that are going on in the world or in your life, personal life, or at your work, mm -hmm. they are not bothering you. Okay. So that is the goal of meditation. Right. Good question, Pranika. We all have to um, constantly keep making ourselves aware of it. I mean, uh, I've been meditating for so many years, but even today, that is one thing that I uh, try to watch out for myself in on a daily basis. If I get complacent, I start moving backwards. Okay. It's as simple as that. Uh, just because I've been doing longer than maybe some of you does not automatically guarantee that my growth will continue. I'll stagnate and I'll start moving backwards. I'll start, start sliding back. And that is the thing is we want to have that forward movement. The forward movement does not take too much effort, 10 to 15 minutes every day, uh, that's all. All right, so uh, talking about today's class, uh, thanks for asking that question, uh, Kanika. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, so today we are going to talk about being positive. What does that mean? What does it mean, it mean to be positive? So when, when I say be positive, what is that? what comes to your mind? We, uh, we are not affected by situations and we are happy. Being happy is an outcome of being positive, right? Um, right. Uh, being affected, not being affected by a situation is, uh, is a good way to think about it, but it's extremely hard. We are human beings, right? Yes. We have emotions, uh, we have intellect. Uh, sometimes the emotion gets... Uh, emotions get disturbed and sometimes the intellect gets challenged. So we do uh, find ourselves into situations where we get either emotionally out of balance or mentally we are feeling challenged or we are feeling stressed. But when you are going through that phase, how do you maintain that positive outlook in your life? How do you, how are you, how can you keep yourself in a positive mode and not be brought down by that negative emotion or uh, you know negative state of mind that we may find ourselves. And uh, we may not always be able to stop that from happening, but the key is how do I get out of it? Do I have the tools to pull myself out of that, right? Uh, because say a bad news comes, what do you do? That's life. You can't stop a bad news from coming to you. But how you respond to that news, how you are able to handle that news is what determines our growth, our ability to stay positive, right? Uh, and that is what we are going to talk about today. <clears throat> and that being positive is eventually leads us to a place where we are able to manage the pain and the depressive 
nature of human beings, right? It's very easy for us to kind of swing into a negative mode. It's very hard to pull ourselves out of it. So the best thing to do is to not swing into that negative mode. That's the best thing to do, right? So what is the experience of being positive? As we're talking about, right? Finding something good even in a bad situation, right? Uh, that there's always something positive that can come out of every situation you have in life. And, uh, you know, just this morning I was talking to my son, he was talking about, you know, he was sharing some news about in his college, uh, you know, somebody leaped off the garage, uh, the top floor of the garage. Uh, and like, wow, what drives a human being to take such an extreme step? Why does a person feel so disempowered to improve their life? Whether it's you know, financially, financial, emotional relationships, whatever the case may be. Why does somebody have to take an extreme step, right? And that is where being positive becomes so important. Right. When, when people are constantly pointing to your failures, to your weaknesses, you're not good, you're not, you know, you can't do this, you, you know, you, you're not, you're no good in life, or blah, blah, blah. It pulls a person down. Whenever you find yourself in a situation where people are being negative towards you, then you know that you have to get yourself out of that place. Whether it's happening at work, whether it's happening in a friend circle or in the family. It can happen anywhere, right? Sometimes you could find yourself surrounded by people who are constantly whining about life, about things, always in a negative mode. Either you have to encourage them to change or get out of there. Because if you don't take action, you'd be drawn into it. You will become like that and it will have a negative effect on your life. So being aware of your surroundings, where you are, uh, whom do you surround yourself with? Same thing uh, in families, it happens. Sometimes, you know, a husband is always, you know, finding fault with what the wife does, right? She can never do anything right. Or vice versa, a wife can never see something right the husband is doing. Or you keep your place messy, you keep the car messy, you don't do this, you don't. That constant nag is what brings a person down. And we want to identify that and either fix it or get out of it. One of the two has to happen because if it does not happen, it will bring down the positivity in you, right? So what can you do? You're being reflective of yourself, right? When you talk, conversations you have, things you talk about, Right? Are they positive things that you talk about or are they things about wrong things that are happening in the world or in your life? And you're always you know, complaining about the wrongs and not able to see the rights, the positives that are going on, right? Can, that, does that conversation that happen, does it put a smile on your face? When you end that conversation, do you leave feeling good, feeling better? Do people walk away from conversations with you feeling better, right? That's a very reflective thing we have to think ourselves. Uh, when I'm talking to people, does the conversation end on a positive note or it's in, in a, you know, on a sad note, right? Does it uh, leave a, a positive outlook in people's mind when the conversation ends or um, is it leaving people in a, in a state of misery? Like, oh man, uh, the world is such a mess, right? So that is something that we have to be conscious about. And when we find ourselves in that state that we are talking about things in a negative tone or not having a positive outlook or overemphasizing only on the problems, not on the solutions. So even if there are problems, doesn't mean that life has to be, you know, hunky-dory and everything has to be great in life. No, we, we all have challenges in life. But then how do we solve those challenges? Are we focusing on the problem or are we focusing on the solution, right? And that is something that we have to watch in ourselves, not brood over the past, not brood over the negativity, not brood over, things happen in life. 
things happen in life. Uh, not all things are good. Bad things happen to a lot of people. Most of us have experienced bad things in life, but those past experiences should not mess up the present. And that is the way we want to look at it. We do not want to let the past overpower our present. And when somebody is going through that phase, being a little empathetic, being supportive is what helps them come out of that state. Right? When some you see someone who's going through that phase in their life, just be their support for some time, help them come out of that state. And they'll be thankful. Once they're out of that state, they'll be thankful. But there's another th flip side to that is there are some people who enjoy living in that mode that, oh, my life is such a mess. I'm all, you know, nothing right happened in my life. My life is such a failure. And when the person is not willing to come out of that state, then there is time to walk away. You do the best you can to help the person. <clears throat> but if the person is not willing to take that help, then you have to make a decision. How long do you want to be associated with this person? And I'll share an experience that I had. There was this one person who used to uh, come to Sajoga. <clears throat> and um, she, many, many years ago, she had uh, been to a Sajoga program uh, where Shimadaji was conducting the program herself. Uh, somewhere um, in the West Coast. And in many years later, she moved to the, the Texas Dallas area and she saw a, a poster of uh, Shamadaji and then we had a program and she showed up. And then she started coming regularly to the programs. Three months went by, six months went by. Every time she would come, you know, she would always complain about how hard her life is and how difficult things are. And I mean, she had a good job. Uh, she, she, had, she had the ability to get herself out of the place wherever she was living in or the relationship she had. But even after a year or two years, she was not willing to walk away from the life she was living. Divine had blessed us with a good job. Yeah, but she was not willing to peel off from the place and the people she was associated with. And that was bringing her down. So in spite of coming and meditating and you know trying to do things at home, she was not able to pull herself out of it because that desire to peel off from a negative environment was not there. And I said, she hasn't come back in, in, in a long time to any of our meetings, but we tried, we tried a lot. Uh, multiple of us, you know, tried to work with her, invited her home, you know, tried to create a positive uh, environment for her in her life, but she was just not willing to pull herself away from the people who were pulling her down. And her life didn't change. The quality of her life didn't change. And that is what it is, is we have to always make that decision for yourself. You have to make that decision. If you find yourself in an environment which is not healthy, you either change the environment or get out of there. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so what are the issues, right, that we deal with? And we've talked about it a lot, uh, right? Adverse life experiences, day-to-day -day challenges, Nothing is perfect in life, right? There's no life that is perfect. <clears throat> there are problems in, with health, there are problems financially, there are problems at work, there are problems in the family. But our job is to look to the positive things that are happening in life. And the more you focus on the positives, you'll find, it's amazingly, you'll find that your kundalini then turns your life into positive um, your health starts to get better. Your uh, financial uh, life starts to get more stable. Uh, your family relationships start to get more positive and strong. That cynicism and negative outlook, they are infectious. So you find yourself in a negative uh, place, pull yourself out of it. Focus on your meditation, focus on your positive thoughts, focus on 
being reflective of our own thoughts and our environment. Those are the two things, right? Am I thinking negative? Are negative thoughts going on in my head? Negative things about either my life or other people, even thinking negative about other people. You may not like somebody, right? Uh, you don't have to like every person you meet, but you don't have to be negative towards anyone. It's even if you don't like the person, if you get negative feelings about the person, watch for that. Like, unless, you know, of course, even if the person is negative himself or herself, a mean person, a selfish person, or uh, whatever the case may be, try to be neutral. Don't try to have negative emotions about that person. Right? Keep your heart clean because it's affecting you being aware of that. What is going on inside my mind? What is going on inside my heart? And that is part of the reflective cycle that we are able to achieve when you are in that state of quietness. When you are in that state of thoughtless meditation, we become reflective. We become like a mirror to ourselves, right? So being that mirror is very important, right? Am I creating a toxic environment inside of me that makes me emotionally sick? mentally sick. And if you find yourself in your heart, you can pray. Mother Energy, please remove this negative thoughts. Your Kundalini is very powerful. It will remove that negative thought. It will remove that negative emotion. Say you have had a bad experience with someone in, in the past. And Im you get emotionally disturbed whenever that thought about that person comes to your mind. So when you are meditating, ask for your Kundalini to clear off that negative emotion. And you'd be amazed how quickly your Kundalini can help you overcome years and years of, you know, this build up negative experience and get past it. And then you become more of an observer. So it's not like you forget what has happened. You become more of a witness to that. Okay, that happened. It's like if you get into an accident but you move on, you get your new car, you move on, you feel bad for some time. Maybe you love that car uh, or you had something, uh, some attachment to that car, but you eventually move on. You look back, you have good memories of driving that car, but now you have moved on. And same thing needs to happen with everything else in our life, right? Uh, or else what we do is we can find ourselves into that cycle of self-pity and I'm the victim and, you know, I, um, nothing ever good happens to me. My life is a mess. We put ourselves into that negative cycle. So it's very important to be aware of that. Right? So if you find yourself uh, dealing with negative emotions all the time, brooding over the past, or crying for no real reason, or if you feel a need to go smoke or drink, uh, that is an indication that, oh, I need to work on myself. Uh, there is a dependency that I have. Whenever I feel sad, whenever I get emotional, I need a drink or I need to smoke. Um, so those are the things to watch for. And because the way any of these uh, toxic substances work is they affect your left side first. They make it harder to uh, come out of uh, that negative emotion. So as you can see in this picture, the left channel inside of us is the channel of the past. It represents all the memories that you have from the past are on this side of the brain. Are on this side of the brain. And it is connected to your first chakra. So all your desires come from the left channel. And you want positive desires. You want positive emotions. This is our emotional side. The left channel is our emotional side. All our emotions come, emotions come from the left channel. So you want positive emotions. You want positive desires. You want positive aspirations. You want positive thoughts. So if you find uh, yourself uh, thinking about negative things or things about the past or crying for no real reason 
or reliving the emotional trauma you may have had in the past. This means your left channel is out of balance and you need to work on it. And when this left channel clears off, automatically those negative thoughts, those negative emotions will go away. It will be replaced by positive energy, positive thoughts, positive desires. So what puts this channel out of balance? You know, it can start at any age. It can start for young children, right? Um, I have read news articles where, you know, 10 years old are committing suicide. I'm like what is going on in a 10 years old life that they have to think about suicide? 10 year old shouldn't even know that there's something like that they can do. What is it that's leading 10 year old to that stage? It means the environment they're living in is a toxic environment. They're growing up in a negative environment. The adults in their life are not creating an environment of positivity around them. They're not giving them a positive place to grow as a child, right? Even if, if there's abuse going on, physical, mental, emotional, sexual abuse going on in life, that puts this left channel, leaves this left channel badly damaged, right? If uh, one of the parent is uh, addicted to alcohol or drugs, uh, that lives, uh, that leaves this left channel badly damaged. Even if the child is not doing it, the environment that gets created in the house because of that uh, abuse is uh, damaging to the child's left channel. And the child will either, you know, hide their head in the pillow and cry for hours or, you know, lock themselves up in a room or sit in a corner, not be very engaging. Children should be happy, bubbly people. They should be running around having fun in life, right? If a child is not doing that, then it is the job of the parents or the adults to ensure they have that in their life. They should not, I mean, they should have to be laughing and yelling all the time, but if they are not being the child, then there's something that needs to change in that environment and it's the responsibility of the adults, right? Um, uh, so those are the factors that we need to be aware of. How are we creating that positive environment in our life? If you are in the company of negative people, <clears throat> the energy will stop flowing. When you meditate, do you feel warm in your left hand? Your left hand is an indicator. When you feel warm in your left hand or you feel burning or heat on the left edge of your palm, that's an indication that there is imbalance in the left channel. So there are multiple ways you can identify what you're going through. Uh, the base of your palm, the left palm, uh, especially. If this, is, you're not feeling coolness here. If you're not feeling anything, that is okay. Uh, but if you're feeling heat or pain or burning in the left, uh, the bottom of your left palm, where the wrist and the palm connect, this point, uh, that's an indication that something is wrong uh, because this represents the first chakra. The first chakra is where the left channel starts. If the left, the, the left side of the first chakra is out of balance, it will bring the energies on the left channel down. Right? So we want to be self-aware. So if you're going through any of this, take action, do something about it. Now, the biggest challenge is <clears throat> when a person is dealing with an imbalance on the left side, it is extremely hard for them to motivate themselves to do something about it. And that is where your willpower comes in. Your, the strength of your desire comes in. The strength of desire of growth, for growth comes in. Because left channel is the channel of desire. If this channel is out of balance, your desire to do something positive, to pull yourself out of that negative situation, or that negative emotion or that negative you know life situation you find yourself in it will be very hard to pull to do that why because 
but the channel that is supposed to give you that positive desire itself is out of balance. So what do you do? The key is your meditation. Your kundalini is the key. So when you sit down and meditate, your kundalini rises. And when the kundalini rises, it clears the attention. And in that state, ask. Ask for positivity. Express your desire to have positive life experiences. And your prayers have a very, very strong effect. Your kundalini is a very powerful, it's the most powerful thing you have inside of you. It's the most positive thing that you have going on in your life. Make use of it, right? Because bad things will not stop happening in life, right? They'll happen. That is life, human life, you know? People will get sick, family will get sick, you will get sick, but you can pull yourself out of that. You can heal yourself physically, emotionally, mentally. So the strength of your desire to grow in your spiritual journey is what you'll have to lean on. That will give you the willpower to work on yourself, work on the left channel. Okay, I'll take a pause here and see if anyone has questions. Uh, I would like to uh, share something and I also have a question. Mm -hmm. So uh, first thing is that I was really being affected by these <clears throat> four people in my life. And yesterday while doing meditation, I kind of cried because I felt like you know, those people are going to defeat me in the sense that, I mean, they have been affecting me emotionally from so long. I have held my ground, but, you know, some days you feel that you will lose, like you will not have that emotional stability. So I kind of surrendered my situation to Ma while uh, meditating. And it's amazing that today we are discussing this and I'm getting my answers to a lot of questions that I was asking her yesterday. Okay. So that's what I wanted to share. And second thing is that many years back, um, a, an emotion of, I started experiencing an emotion of fear. It was very unexplained. It Like I used to get up in the morning and used to feel it very, much and it was very overwhelming so it was not like something was happening in my day and because of that I was feeling that but it was there unexplained and then uh, sort of after some years it kind of got converted I think into a fee uh, an emotion of sadness and sometimes I perpetually feel it mm -hmm. My life is good. I, I I realize that I shouldn't be in this state. But again, I feel that I don't have really a control over it. It is there. It is unexplained. I have done a couple of things to get over it. But I have achieved limited success. Mm -hmm. So um, does that also come from the negative channel being affected and like should like you asked us to ask for positivity while meditation. So is that something I can do to improve my situation? Yes, absolutely. Because it all goes to your left channel. Any kind of negative emotion, thought, anything that pulls you down mm -hmm. or makes you fearful of life or makes you uh, not be confident in yourself that is a function of the left side the left side being out of balance okay. and it's as i said earlier right it's more easy to put the left channel out of balance it doesn't take much to put the left channel out of balance so excuse me being aware of your left channel of the state of your left channel and taking action is very important you have to stay on top of it right you have to stay on top of these negative thoughts, negative emotional, negative experiences in life. And the way you do it is when you meditate, if you find yourself going through that phase in your life, clearing your left channel. And one of the things that I like to show is how to clear the left channel. Um, 
easiest thing to do is when you meditate, put your left hand towards Shri Mataji's picture and put your right hand on the ground. Okay. The earth element pulls out negative energies from the left hand. It sucks it out, right? Another okay. thing to do is uh, light a candle when you meditate. Lighting a candle when you meditate burns the negative energies, right? Because it's the negative energies that filling up the left channel. You want to burn those out, take those out and fill them with positive energies. Um, so lighting a candle when you meditate. So you can put Shamanji's picture, you can light a little candle there next to it. When you do your foot soak, do it in warm water. And uh, when you meditate and when you are in foot soak, put your left hand on your lap and right hand towards the ground. And if that does not fix the problem, you know, you can use the candle. Candle is a very positive, uh, the light element is a very positive thing to clear the left channel. So uh, there's something we call as the candle treatment, where you can light a candle, put it in a little plate, and you know, move it up and down your left channel, a little far from your body. So uh, as an example, so if this is, you know, I'd like to show it, I'll, I'll try to uh, pull a candle and show you uh, during this session. All right. uh, so just moving that candle up and down your left channel helps mm -hmm. clear out the energy in the left, on the left side. So it's very important to take care of yourself, especially the left channel in yourself, to have a positive life. It is super important. And that's why we see in this world, people that seemingly have a good life are rich people, have all that a human being would expect, but they do things to harm themselves. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because the left side's goals are out of balance. Drugs, alcohol, you know, um, all kinds of uh, wrong sexual behavior. Those are telltale signs of a left side being messed up. Okay. So if that is happening, uh, or emotional uh, imbalance, uh, work on it, fix it. You have to stay on top of the game. It uh, doesn't mean you have to spend an hour clearing your left channel, but do it five, 10 minutes every day. And in a matter of few weeks, you will get over it. Depression. Depression is uh, the biggest psychological issue the world is dealing with. Um, and my, my brother-in-law is a psychotherapist. Uh, and he tells me, I mean, these people, and he is a professional. He's, you know, studied for years uh, uh, to practice, to get his license for practice. Uh, and he tells me that, you know, many times I wish I could give them professional advice to clear their left channel. But, you know, he, he cannot give that professional advice to clear the left channel. He has to treat them, uh, you know, through whatever the techniques that they that he has learned in school and uh, are professionally approved. Uh, but he, when he sees a case that is really bad, he will, you know, give them a side advice to sit down, meditate, clear the left channel. Because he's a practicing uh, Sahaja Yogi, he does meditate himself. So, and he tells me, Ajit, it's so easy for me to just tell them that, hey, go clear your left side, uh, use the candle and your depression and all these problems that you're dealing with will go away very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and uh, I can tell you, it works. Uh, I have seen people come out of uh, the challenges of the left side. All right. Awesome. Any other questions? Cannot thank you enough. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for sharing your uh, your story and your experiences, Monica. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, anyone has any other questions? Thoughts, comments? All right. So I hope this made sense. So let's uh, get into our uh, meditation. Uh, as always, we'll start with our foot soak as step number one. Um, if you have a foot soak bowl ready, now is a good time to pull it out. I'll pull out my uh, foot soak tub and we'll all get started in a couple of minutes.
So let's all start with raising a Kundalini and doing uh, the bandhan, the protection. So raise a Kundalini three times, very slowly. Put the protective shield, the pandan, around ourselves. The attention on one chakra at a time. And we do it seven times. You can, if you have your foot soap bowl ready, you can put uh, put our feet in the foot soap bowl. Close your eyes gently and just relax yourself. Put your two palms on your lap, open, facing upwards. Take a deep breath. Breathe in very slowly. Fill your lungs. Feel the tightness in your chest. And very slowly breathe out. We'll do it two more times. Now breathe normally. So we put our right hand over the left hip. Bring your attention to the left hip. Hold the attention. This is the left side of your second chakra. Here we ask, Mother Energy, please give me pure knowledge. Six times. Mother Energy, please give me pure knowledge.
Six we move the right hand. The left side of our tummy, left side of the stomach. Bring the attention there. For the energy. I am my own teacher. I am my own guru. We say it 10 times. I am my own teacher. I am my own guru. With the attention fully immersed into the stomach, into the tummy. Next, we move our hand to our heart. And now slowly move the attention into the heart, into your spirit. Immerse it. Connect the attention with your spirit. Reaffirm for the energy I am the pure spirit. For the energy I am the pure spirit. We say it 12 times, of the energy I am, the pure spirit.
Next, we move our hand to our neck on the left. Turn the head to the right. Get a nice grip over the left side of your neck. Mother energy, I'm not this guilt, but I'm pure self esteem. I say it 16 times. Bring the attention here to the neck. Mother energy, I'm not this guilt. But I'm pure self esteem. If you move our hand across the forehead, get a nice grip of the forehead. Press it. Mother energy, I forgive everyone and also myself. Just unconditional forgiveness, without questions, without preconditions. It's important for us to move on in life. Mother energy, I forgive everyone and also myself. When we move our hand to the back of our head, rest our head into a palm. And here we say, O oh, Divine, please forgive me if I have made any mistakes. The small pervading force of God it knows we as human beings may make mistakes. It's human to make mistakes. O oh, Divine, please forgive me if I have made any mistakes. Next, we move our hand to the top of our head, spread out the fingers, put the palm on the top of the head. Feel the pressure of your palm. And very slowly massage the scalp, left, front, right and back, very slowly. Seven times, and here we say, Mother Energy, please establish my self-realization. Mother Energy, 
please establish my self-realization. Slowly but firmly massage the head, massage the skull. Left, front, right and back, circular motion. Mother energy, please establish my self-realization seven times. We can bring our right hand down, back on our lap, and now relax yourself. Loosen up your arms in and legs. Palms on your lap, open facing upwards. Eyes shut gently. Attention at the top of the head in your soft stone, the seventh chakra. Just hold the attention there for a few moments. Watch the thoughts as they come and go. Now we can slowly open our eyes. And if you're, if you have your feet in the foot circle, now is the time to rinse the feet and we'll end the foot soak. For those of us who are not using the foot soak bowl, you can continue meditating for another couple of minutes while we get back.
We'll watch a video in which Madhuri is talking about the left channel. And while we watch, we can keep our attention, try to keep the attention at the top of your head, your palms open, on your lap, facing upwards. Just try to absorb what you hear. About God, I'll tell you next time. Self-realization means to bring your spirit into your conscious mind. Now, how cancer is caused? Let's see here what happened. It is caused by left-sided activity. Now, left-sided activities are emotional traumas, emotional problems emotional upheavals, emotional insecurities. <clears throat> Any kind of insecurity can take you to the left side. Little more movement can be these horrible gurus because they hypnotize. They put you to the left. <clears throat> they put some spirit in you or I don't know what they do, but they put you to the left. Any one of these activities which are not authorized by God taken to, you go to the left side. Because you cannot ascend in the center. So either you go to the left or to the right. When you overdo these things, it's like black magic. You have another thing here I've heard, uh, some sort of a organization had. And the fellow, you see, he used to, uh, everything he saw moving in the house, uh, he came to Sahaja Yoga and uh, his uh, water uh, jug was moving there and this was moving there and he couldn't explain what was happening in his room. He was sitting down and he found something moving from here to here. It happens. What is that? What is that doing this kind of a thing which you cannot control? Again we come to the same point. Something you cannot control. So you enter into the realm, into the realm where you are controlled and you are not under your control. And that realm when you enter in, I have always seen all the cancer patients are the ones affected by this. Most of the time. They are not aware, they do not know how they get into it. For a lady, supposing say, she is suffering from an insecurity about her husband or maybe something, or maybe she thinks that her husband may leave her any time, she loves him, whatever it is. Such a woman might get a breast cancer. Because the insecurity is set in, in one of the centers there, which you can see here, the center of the heart, center heart as we call it. Now, if this center goes out of order, if a woman feels insecure for anything whatsoever, she is capable, she is vulnerable to be attacked and she can get into cancer. So we have to understand life in totality and not in one way. The total impact of life, the total effect of life, the total relationship with life must be understood. Now, no doctor knows this. Will he know? When he treats a patient for the, say, breast cancer, will he know that this lady is insecure? There's another disease, anorexia. Many girls suffer from it. Uh, they don't just eat, they just give up eating. Now, you do not know why it happens. Doctors can't cure it, nobody can cure it. What is the reason? The relationship of a girl, of a daughter with a father. Say father dies and the daughter doesn't see the father. Or she, in heart she loves her father but she doesn't express it. Or there's some bad relationship that comes between the father and the daughter. You get this trouble anorexia. You'll be amazed. But it is impossible for doctors to get it. We have some doctors sitting here. It is impossible for any medical science to go near because they do not see a human being in its totality. It's a very delicate instrument God has created. The way we are harsh with others, the way we sometimes try to trouble others, try to make others feel insecure or unfair, unjust, Without our knowledge, we really give them a tremendous insecurity. And such insecurities can work out incurable diseases of which we are not aware. 
So to understand the totality, what should happen to us? We should achieve that state where we can see the totality. Like if I have to see now, for example, the whole of Brighton, what should I do? I should go on a plane and see it from that height. I can see the whole. In the same way, in your awareness, in your understanding, you should rise to that point from where you can see the whole. If you cannot see the whole, the partial vision, or we can say a little that you see, can create confusion, can create problems, and some of them could be of a very, very serious nature. Because as human beings, we do not know what are we. This is the greatest problem of human beings. That So we'll continue our meditation for a few more minutes. We'll close our eyes. Gently, not too tight. That they say, I don't like it. The palms open on our lap, facing upward. Now try to bring the attention down to your first chakra, very slowly. From the top of your head, along your spine, along the central channel. Into your forehead. Slowly into your throat, into your chest, down into the stomach, and then to the base of the spine. This is our first chakra, the Muladhar chakra. Now hold the attention here, steady. Eyes shut gently, not too tight. Now we put our right hand towards the Mother Earth, towards the ground. If you're sitting on the floor, you can just simply put your right hand on the ground, onto the floor. If you're sitting on a chair, you can put it towards the floor, towards the ground. Hold the attention at the first step. Mother Energy, please remove all the imbalances from our first chapter. Please clean my Muladhar chakra. Please make all my desires positive. Mm -hmm. 
please remove all the negative design. Please remove all the negative thoughts. Hold the attention. Study. the energy. Please remove all the imbalances from my left channel. Mother Earth, please remove all the negative energies from my left channel. Please put me in balance. Now we can bring our left hand back on our lap, put the right hand back on our lap. Now slowly move the attention to the hip level, along the spine, along the central channel. Here we say, Mother Energy, please remove all the negativity from my attention. Make my attention positive. Mother Energy, please remove all the negativity from my attention. Please make my attention positive.
Now we have moved the attention to the third chakra, right at the belly button line, the navel. Hold it there for a few seconds. And move the attention up to the fourth chakra, right in the middle of your chest. You can put your right hand on your chest. Mother energy, please remove all the fears and insecurities. We'll say it three times. Mother energy. Please remove all the fears and insecurities. Then we can bring the right hand down. Next, move the attention into your throat, the fifth chakra. Hold it there. Mother energy, please make all my communications positive. What I see, what I say, what I hear. Please make my communications positive. Now we move our attention to the sixth chakra, right in the middle of the forehead. Put your ring finger on the right hand, right in the middle of your forehead. Feel the pressure of your finger. And slowly massage that point in a circular motion. Top, left, down and right. I let go. And up again. I let go. And up again. I let go. And up again. Now put your right hand on the top of your head. Bring the attention into the south chunk. Massage your spine very slowly, but firmly. Seven times. Mother energy. Please establish my state of thoughtless meditation. Or please establish me in a state of thoughtless meditation. Seven times. Mother energy. Please establish me in a state of thoughtless meditation.
so we can bring the head down. Now relax yourself. Loosen your arms and your legs. Relax your back and the neck. Relax the forehead and the eyebrows. Relax the face. Hold at the top of your head. Another couple of minutes. Just say in, stay in silent meditation. We can slowly open our eyes. Raise a Kundalini three times. And put the Bamba, the shield around ourselves seven times.
So this brings us to the end of today's session. Wanted to see if anyone had any questions, comments. Hope you all have had a good meditative experience. So um, for those of you who want to see how to use the candle to clear the left side, I have a candle for myself here that I will be showing. <coughs> so I hope you all can see, see me. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, the candle has to be lit uh, and safety is paramount. So you have to be extremely careful and aware of what you're doing and how you're doing. So safety is number one. Do not let it hurt you. But the way to do it is to use... Sorry, go ahead. I'd like to suggest that anyone who wants to see this in the top right, click view and under view, click speaker view and that will make a bigger image of you uh, so it's easier to tell what's going on if they're not already aware of that. Thanks, Michael. All right, so this is the candle. This is the left channel. You can just move it up and down. Make sure that it is far enough, at least six to 10 inches away from you. There's enough space between you and the candle. Just move it up and down in front of you. Start from the left hip, move it up. And when you get to the head, move it to the right. You can see how much space I have between my head and the candle. That is the amount of space you want to maintain, at least uh, 12 inches, 10 to 12 inches of space. So especially women with long hair, be extremely careful. Uh, but just doing this for a few minutes, two to three minutes helps clear the left channel. And when you meditate, you can keep the candle near your left palm. So you don't burn yourself, but you can feel the warmth coming from the candle. So just move it up and down for a minute or so. And then when you're done, leave the candle on your left side. So your thumb is pointing towards the candle and you can feel the warmth. So you're not burning yourself, you're not hurting yourself but you can feel the gentle warmth coming from the candle. And then for the next five, seven minutes, just meditate with the candle placed either on a stool or if you're sitting on the floor, just keep the candle on the floor and your hand can rest on your lap with your thumb pointing towards the flame. Far enough where you don't burn yourself or hurt yourself, but you can feel the gentle warmth come from the candle. So questions, and if this feels any bit unsafe, do not do it. Safety is paramount. Do not do anything uh, that will hurt you. Uh, be safe. The intent is to use the fire element to clear off the left channel, but at the same time, you want to be safe. So questions. Could you uh, stand up and, oops, no, excuse me. Go ahead, Michael. Could you stand up and show us how far down you go with the candle? Uh, sure. Let me return that. No, it doesn't have to be lit. Just 
Well, okay. So start from your hip, right? So this is you your hip. This you, is don't hip. Start, you don't start from your knees or your ankles. No. You start from your from hip. The hip. Yeah. You start from your hip and move it along. But maintain the distance between you and the candle. At least 12 inches away from your body. Start from the hip. Move it up. And as you move it up, you get to the forehead, you move it to the right. See the amount of space I have between my head and the candle. You have to maintain that space. And it's, it's the, uh, the flame is at the height of your forehead. Yeah, the flame the bottom, is at the... Of the bottom of the candle is down around your mouth. Or... Yeah, or your nose or something. Yeah. Depending upon the length of the candle. Got so it. it's the flame that is about your forehead and you move it to the right. All right, questions? Is uh, overthinking a symptom of you being affected in your left channel or right channel? Depending on what you overthink about. If you're thinking about your past, if you're brooding over things that have happened in the past, mm -hmm. if you find yourself living in the past, right? Oh, life was so good 10 years ago when I was in this place and surrounded by this pe these people, right? Or life was, life has always been so miserable for me, right? From blah, 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 right? Okay. Any thoughts from the past means your left channel needs to be worked on. Thoughts about the future and you're thinking, over planning, you're planning too much. That's an indication of imbalance on the right channel then you do the opposite. You need to keep an ice pack on your uh, right hip or uh, right above on the tummy, on the right side, right above the hip, okay. that area. You put an ice pack over there. You could stand and show us where that is? Uh, yeah, that is next week. We'll do that next week. Well, okay, now you owe me $5 for asking that question. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Any other questions? So these are just little tools, you know, tips and tricks that help clear the energy on the left and right channel, put it in balance. And you don't have to do it every day, right? Do it when you need it, right? Or do it only as long as you need it, right? Think about it as medication, right? You don't take medication forever. Once you're healed, you stop taking the medication. Uh, so... Uh, the candle, the use of the candle is very prescriptive. You have to prescribe to yourself. You have to decide for yourself if you need it. Uh, and how do you decide? We covered that in the class today. Okay. Go ahead, Michael. So I, I have a, a question that's related to the candling. Mm -hmm. you bring the candle in front of your forehead. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be a practical matter because mm -hmm. it seems like, as I understand it, the left channel comes up and it, as it goes over to the right side, it actually curls around the back of your mm -hmm. head. That's right. And then comes around to the right side. So, so actually, but, but it would be crazy to try and take, take a lit candle on the no. back of our head. No, no, no. So we're just being practical and we go straight up across the forehead over yep. to the left side. That's just being practical and safe. Yeah, we don't want to do something crazy that will cause harm. Well, they say practice like your hair is on fire. But they don't, <laughs> they don't mean it in a, in a literal sense. Literal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having fun with you. Yes. Uh, and it becomes uh, a little more, you have to be extra careful, especially the women have to be extra careful when they have long hair or hair if they're loose. Tie your hair, make sure you've tied your hair uh, into a knot or something, a bun or something. So you are not exposed to any kind of uh, danger. All right, any other questions? Uh, last week, you had uh, shared two mantras with me, uh, one for, um, uh, one, like, 
you like if you get thoughts while meditating so you had told me a mantra for that which in english meant not this thought not this mm-hmm. thought and you had also shared a mantra with me for before going to sleep so i tried to look them up on internet but i couldn't find them would it be possible for you to share those with me uh, yeah so it's not important to remember it right away right this just the essence behind it right you ask so because our system has all the capabilities we need to live a healthy life right so invoking that capability inside of us right so uh, uh for for the thought it's the it's a sanskrit phrase right uh ya neeti neeti vachane right uh, i'll try to email this to you um in uh, in the devanagari script if you want Oh, but essentially okay. it translates into not this thought not this oh. you're denying the thought access to your mind right not this thought very actively very consciously we mm-hmm. say it a few times so we can reduce the the flow of thoughts in our mind when you you're trying to get into a meditative state right so that is for thoughtlessness and then for sleep right many people get into bed and you're tossing around right the first thing i recommend is start doing foot soaking 5 to 7 minutes of foot soak before going to bed right mm-hmm. uh, i'll just share my example of last night right i've been doing this for as long as i've been doing this right every once in a while there is a day where you are like too lazy or too tired right i've had a very busy week friday evening um watched some tv and then was ready to go to bed and i was too lazy to do foot soak mm-hmm. so i went and uh lay down in my bed and then 5 minutes later i was like not falling asleep i'm like okay i have to go get my foot soak tub so i pulled out my foot soak tub did my foot soaking and then i slept within a minute i was off right so uh, just doing that foot soak uh, in warm water or cold water depending upon whether you are feeling more on the left or more on the right mm-hmm. uh do the foot soak and then when you are lying in bed just express that desire mother energy please put me to sleep i want to have a quiet sound sleep right so you're invoking that power inside of you that puts you to sleep over your thoughts over your emotion over everything else that is in the head so that that balance that these powers work inside of us we just need to invoke them okay got your point Thank you so much. Sure. All right. Uh thank you all for joining today's session. It was a a a very good session. I enjoyed it and thanks for all the questions. And if you have any questions please bring them uh next Saturday. We'll see you all next Saturday. Thank you for joining. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Take care. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.